432. Uh, I walked in here one time. Now, Beethoven music, or music like that, is in 432. I walked in here, well, I, I turned it on one time, and I was in here, and and uh, it does something to you, but I turned my wife on to it. She said, and I remember that Brother Harry had walked in and he said, what is that? You know how you do, what is that? But it was different. It calms you down, okay? Why do you think you be calm in a doctor office? They play the class of music. Meditation jacked it. See, the cult know this here. And so why you think uh, those in Hollywood are attracted to the, the gurus? Because they start playing that music to them and they do feel better. They playing that music. All that stuff means something. That hum, All that stuff means something. They jacked it to the point that we say, man, I ain't doing that, man. I went to pack the house. He's sitting down. Uh, Martin knew about that. Martin. On a... No, 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 no. no uh, Martin on a... Yeah, 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 yeah. When he used to do that, <laughs> when he used to do that, they, they know this stuff. But <laughs> just thought I'd just throw that out there to you. King David knew that. King David knew that. What kind of note did you think that Israel hit? Okay, thank you, script. Y'all remember that commercial? When that lady used to sing? And she break that glass? Is it live or? Yeah, that was, it was showing us the power of the that voice. Y'all put down inside of us. King David knew that. Music heals us. Music makes us violent. I got to move on, but I'm just going to say just one more thing. Notice that, that they knew this here, right? And notice that back in the day, I just want to speak about our community, right? That when they used to play songs that were positive, say it loud, I'm black and proud. And then, I mean, just connection music, right? There was no violence in the neighborhood, but they caught on to it. And guess who they brought on the scene? A group by the NWA. And everything changed. See, y'all think this stuff was about accident. They use music to control people. They did the same thing with the rock and roll. Who that went down to Georgia because he was looking for a soul to steal. He was in a bind. He was way behind. The man, went, he tell you he went and sold his soul to the devil. That's where rock and roll came from. Oh, let me get this word going. <laughs> I ain't smoking now. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> What's up? They don't even glasses up there. The master, you have to hear me, man. I just had. I was in the room tasting the cabbage, though. I might have left me. <laughs> <laughs> let's get. Let's go to work for the time. That we have here. Now I heard Marcel makes a statement early when he was praying that Israel was to proclaim something in the ancient world that wasn't popular in the ancient world. That was the monotheism to declare that's only one Elohim. One Elohim. This is what Israel had to proclaim and and listen, Yah did not put them on a desert island. If you look at the map, you will see that Israel was surrounded by our the Moabites, the Hittites, everybody, and they had to be different. As we talked about uh, on Thursday, we talked about how that uh, uh, the proper translated for the word Gentile is to be what, Sister Karen? What the proper uh, translation should be for going, which means what? Nation or people, okay? Very important because the word Gentile messes us up. And when we come to the Greek, it's ethnos, meaning race or nation. So here is the Most High. He chooses a nation to make himself known to all the rest of the nation. Very important. Israel was to reveal the Most High. 
to the rest of the nation. Just like you and I, our responsibility is to make disciples, to make Yah known to other people. He make himself known to us, then we make him known to others. That's the mission of Israel. Not to boast as we are better than other nations. We've been set high so other nations can recognize that you are the one that represent the most high God. Very important. But when Israel try to be like the other nations, then that's the problem right there. Because we are distorting who the most high is. Now, even when we look at the name Yisrael, let me show you something here. Just the name here, Israel. Let's see what I got over here. Let me see what I got. What I got over here. When we look at uh, uh, in Genesis chapter 49, verse 10, you, uh, you don't have to turn there, but I'm just going to give you the verse. That 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 when the Mushiach come, his job was to gather the people. That's his job. And so when you look at the New Testament and you see one of the downplay that uh, they use concerning Yeshua, well, if he was the Messiah, why are we still in exile? That's their excuse, but not understanding that the Mushiach first had to come as a, a Joseph, meaning the suffering servant. Then he's going to come the second time as the son of David, the conquering king. But when we look at the word Yisrael, this is very important. Yisrael in the, in the Hebrew is 3478. Okay? Yisrael. We say Israel, but it's Yisrael. And it comes from 8280, which is Shara or Sarah. Now, what? It, it's, it's a connection. Why? Now, the word Sarah is 8280. Okay? And guess what it means? It means strong or powerful. Now, if you think about that, ladies, that Sarah was a strong powerful lady. It's the same word that if you look up, y'all remember that verse that they be using on y'all, a, a virtual woman who can find? Most ladies hate that chapter. Because you're like, I can't live up to all that. Proverbs 31.10 But the word ought to be translated virtual is the word for strong. Strength. Warrior. So the writer saying who can really, wow. Okay, thank you. Most men, most weak men can't deal with a strong woman. Am I right? So the so 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 the writer wants us to know who can find a strong, powerful, a warrior woman. Boy, if you get a listen, ladies, if y'all stand and fight for us, we can take a city. I, I, I'm just telling the truth. Hallelujah. If we feel, if y'all make us feel defeated, we can't conquer nothing. Even though we are men. But if our wife are not behind us, man, we just feel weak. Everybody in the world can give me amen. But if my wife ain't supporting me, that's a that's a that's a power that's missing. Am I right, fellas? Or am I just making this up? If boy, if she build your surface self-esteem at the house, at work, it's home. Am I right? We can conquer anything. When we have a strong woman. So just think how strong Sarah was. To the point that the Bible called you Sarah Dawes. But it did say if, if you obey. Strong. So Sarah was a strong woman. I want y'all to think about that for a moment. Let's do it a little bit. How Sarah trusted Abraham. To leave. To go into a land that she didn't know about. She trusted Abraham to make Almost a thousand mile journey. We ain't talking about, uh, listen, we ain't talking about moving across the street. We ain't talking about moving to Galveston. We ain't talking about moving, making a long distance. This might be uh, Yeshua, because I remember the song, Carga, Carga on the Mainland. I give you time. It happened, Dad. It happens. Uh -oh. <laughs> just trying to make sure it's ready. Amen. But you understand this here. I want us to understand that that to be chosen in the ancient world to be 
opposite from everybody around you to proclaim there's only one Elohim, then you got Nimrod after you? You listen, it's like you and I doing that. We proclaiming that it's not Easter. We proclaiming it's not Sunday or Christmas. You gotta be strong, Israel. And people, can you imagine people looking at them saying, oh, poor people, they only got one God. Y'all need to start thinking like the ancient. So he's claiming that. We see the story throughout when Nezekiel said, okay, let's see, can your God deliver you now? Huh? Let's see. Listen, if you ever, listen, if, if the revelation ever goes off that the battle is against the God. But the King James can't translate Elohim like that. If he begin, if he's trying to say in the beginning was the gods. Because Elohim is in what? The plural. But it's, 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 it seems as it's in the singular, but it's in the gods. But in our mind, we think in more than one God. But he's a unified God. He's unified with himself. And so Israel is in a world that everybody is worshiping more than one deity. And so when we look at Egypt or the Egyptian, we can see that the Most High is attacking their deities. And when you look at uh, the tree worshippers, right? The tree worshippers. Uh, in the ancient days, the Ishtars and so on, so on. The enemy got slick. He said, okay, I'm going I'm to put it on the back of a dollar bill. What the enemy does, guys, he put it right in front of your face. I, I can't remember who said it, that. Just tell a lie so big that it'd be impossible for people to believe it. Put it right on the dollar bill. And we know what, what, what money made out of tree. And we see all the symbolic symbols that come straight from Egypt. And so it's like on the coup, we bow down to the Egyptian system. Think about that. We're bowing down. We sacrifice for the Egyptian system or the Baal. And the more that you sacrifice for the system, the more it gives you. It's scary. But it's all around us. But we don't believe it. It's all around us. I told my wife the other day that the enemy knew that he can't use really uh, words hardly anymore be, because he remembered in Genesis that when he tried to get his people together by unifying them with one language, one purpose, that the Most High scattered his people, right? And so what the enemy has done now, he started using symbols and numbers. So that's how the cult speaks to each other. Y'all think these little signs just like sign? No, these are they're speaking to each other. So Israel, our job is to be an example to the nation. Watch this here. Oh, I'm going so well. We live even more in a difficult time than our father Abraham. He had to leave his own homeland. But he still was going to deal with these false gods. And so what was going to keep Abraham set apart? By moving from city to city? No, what was going to keep us lined up? What was going to keep Israel straight? Well, there's no coincidence that the word, that one of the root words for for uh, uh, Yisrael is Yasa or Yashira, the book of Yashira. That some people say it's like that, but it doesn't exist. Y a s h a r. That's the root word of Yisrael, and it means straight. It means to walk straight. Now think about this here. You have to break words down in Hebrew to get a proper meaning. So Yisrael. And the root word of Israel is Yasah, means to walk straight. But what's going to cause us to walk straight? 
Huh? The Torah. So Israel will be given a Torah of instruction, and as long as they obey it, they will stay on the right path. And it's through the Torah that's going to make us strong. So notice how all these word plays in there. Strength, warrior. At the end of the book of Malachi, okay, in chapter 4, you have to turn there, but I'm just going to just throw it out there to you. That in Hebrew, that it used the word Yesiah or uh, Ashim, Ashin, which means a warrior or to bite. The Torah was to be a warrior. We use the word to fight with. That's why the scripture tells us in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 that the word of Yah is like a two-edged sword, right? It destroys the enemy. So Israel, we have to understand that the Torah is what calls us to walk straight. It is the Torah that gives us the strength to be like a warrior. We don't have to complicate this here. So now we are returning back to the Torah, and this is our plumb line. This will keep us on the right track. Very important. That is as simple as I can give it. Okay? So now when we talk about the declaration of, of uh, the Torah is the Shema. This is what we say each and every day. Shema. Obey Israel. We know what Shema means. It means obey. Obey his voice to pay attention. Moses is speaking to the future generation. And so ain't no sense even going any further, Mike, if we're not going to obey. Really though, if we're not going to obey. He told Joshua, your success is dependent on meditating on his word and doing it. Am I right? So Israel, we have to have an ear. We have to have an attitude that he's not talking to them, but he's talking to us. See, a lot of times we want to just point it to somebody else that need it. But he's spinning, he's talking to us. That Israel, Shema Israel, he's speaking to Israel, his people. So we're not to look at it and say, well, what about the Canaanites? Why they not obeying? Why they not doing? That's right. Yah has chose Israel to be a representation of the people. And if we do the right job, if our forefathers did do the right job, the nation was going to come as we're going to see. You know the scripture in Jeremiah chapter 10, thing like verse 2, that talks about that the nation are going to come and say, surely we have inherited the lies. Sorry, that's uh, Jeremiah chapter 16, probably like verse 19. Surely we have inherited lies. This is what the nations are going to come. They're going to realize that. But Israel, who is in the house, and many people are going to join, we don't have to wrestle with what to do. We just have to read it and obey. That is very important. Very important. So as we look at the Shema, we talked about the word in the Shema. Let's go to work. That's a long introduction. I even shortened it up. Is that microphone back there moving, son? Is it moving? Can you hear my voice? It's moving? All right, all right. Now watch this here. Even when we look at even when we look at the Shema, okay, let me get someone to read it. Uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, we'll read verses 4 through 9. This is a declaration. This ain't just a saying. Uh, many people, you know, in the Christian world, in our denomination, oh, the Bible says just love God all your heart, and so on and so on, love your neighbor. Say, no, no, it's much more than that. This is us making a declaration. The question is, what does it mean to love God? How do I know if I'm doing it the right way? It has to be something. It has to be a guideline. It has to be a guideline. Who have it over there? Mike? 
Hear, O Israel, Jehovah, Jehovah, Elohim is one, one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these, and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently to thy children, and thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give the great and goodly cities which thou buildest not. That's good. That's good. Okay. Now, this is what I want you to see, that when we look at the word, okay, dealing with word study, very important. You have to slow down and look up word study. You have to become disciplined in that because a lot of words that you think mean this here doesn't mean that. Very important. So, like I said, the word Shema means to pay attention, to have an attitude, to listen, to do. So when Yahshua says in the Brit Hadashah or the New Covenant, he who has an ear. So basically what he's saying, if, if you have an ear, obey. That's all he's saying. So we can't ignore the first word. If you ask the average person, they say, well, it's to love God. No, it's to obey. Yeah. It's to obey, to pay attention what's it being said now let's look at the other word where we translated some was translated as yahweh Jehovah, yahuwah but let's just keep it simple the strong number is 3068 okay now the only reason that i use the word Jehovah is based on the vowel markings that's it that's all i know i love the way that my other uh brother said uh, what's his name the one that you listen to huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Now, I just don't have a vowel for it yet. Now, watch this here. Now, those will try to argue like, no, it's Hayah. No, it's not. Hayah is not just a, uh, a hey, ba, hey, okay? Because the word Hayah, I can show you in other places, strong number 1961, Karen. It only means exist. That's all the word means. Exist. And when you put the prefix to it, which is a yod, then it say, who exists? Jehovah. So when Moses come to him and say, well, who are you? Who should I tell him sent me? He said, just tell him I am, I am. Hayah, hayah. Which means I exist. So you go tell them I exist. Who exists? Keep on reading. Jehovah exists. That's all the word means. So when you go to like the root word, Karen, is 1933. So all it means that he that exists. We have to believe no matter what I'm going through, no matter what sickness, disease, hard time, whatever we're going to find ourselves in, we have to understand that he still exists in my situation. So the first thing that the Most High wanted to tell Israel when they was in captivity is a lot of times that we find ourselves in a disaster situation, a painful situation, a situation that I don't know how I'm going to get out. And so he's telling, talking to the people that's in slavery. And after a while, you want to do this God that they talked about, does he exist? Think about that. You wonder because you looking, watch this, watch this. You looking because I know that before Joseph left, Joseph said, the God of our father is going to visit you. Didn't he say that? And so now, Joseph said, now keep my bones. And when y'all come out of Egypt, bring my bones. So now you can imagine that they're looking at Joseph's bones and saying, now Joseph, uh, Joseph said that. Joseph said that the God of our father are going to visit us. Where did Joseph get that from? Because Jacob said it to Joseph in Genesis 46 that the God of our father is going to visit us. And that was a prophecy being passed down. I think that one of the uh, 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 danger things that's going on even in the Hebrew, what we're doing now is not understanding prophecy. 
This is not something we making up. This is prophecy being fulfilled right before our eyes. And man think that we just doing a, you know, it's a black Hebrew thing, or these people going crazy, or are we in a cult? Not understanding that this is prophecy, honey. This is prophecy fulfilled right before our eyes. If they knew the book. And that's why Revelation 19 10 say that the spirit of Yeshua is the spirit of prophecy. So we have to understand in all our madness that's going on right now. This thing, let me go on record. This thing is not going to get better. So we need to rule up in this thing that's going on. Because once the flesh get in it, it's going to burn. And flesh stinky. Y'all ever smell some burned flesh? It's stinky. So if it start getting stinky around here, that means there's too much flesh going on. It's only the ruach is going to keep this thing where we don't get involved in it and mess with these things. Oh, yeah, we're going to hit each other on the side of the head, say some thing, whatever. But we have to allow the all of the ruach to bring, you know, some unity, to keep the unity, as Paul said through Ephesus. Keep and thou to make every effort to keep the unity. That's the deal. Oh, you make an effort. That's what Paul said. Make effort. I just didn't like the way he said it. So, all the name of Jehovah, Yahweh, Yahuwah, means that he exists. He exists. That's all. So, pay attention, Israel. Jehovah exists. We're talking about the Shema. We even got started here. We're talking about the Shema. Pay attention. Why? Because he exists. We think that the Most High has left us to our own disaster. No, he hasn't. That's a timetable. And then another word that we want to look at is Elohim. Scroll number 430. Elohim. Now, this is going to throw you off. Let me find this verse right quick in, the, in Psalms, uh, uh, Psalms 8 that the translator said, nah, that verse can't mean that. But when I show it to you, don't get to tripping now. Because I know some of those in the uh, big time preachers have said this here, we are not gods. Because the word does not mean that. Karen, if, if, if you have the Strong's number, Strong's open is Psalms uh, chapter 8, verse 5. Then I'm going to show you something here. Psalms 8, verse 5. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Now he's talking about man. But what is the Hebrew word for angel? Elohim. Come on, God is saying. Elohim. They didn't know what to do with that. They said, no, David can't. The spirit can listen. Remember, it's the spirit. All scripture is inspired, right? So the translator said, no, he can't be saying that. He said, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And who is the son of man, huh? That thou art concerned about him or care for him. Thou hast made him a little lower than Elohim. And watch it here. Because Elohim doesn't always, doesn't always mean God. Like in the God sense we think about, no. Elohim in the Hebrew mindset means a strong leader. It means powerful. Did not he tell Moses, I will make you like a god to Pharaoh. Did not he say that? So, 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 uh, uh, Elohim, all it means is a strong leader. It means power. We, we have the olive and the lamed. Power. Strength. The shepherd's staff, authority. A strong leader. So, that shows you how strong Moses was. He's leading all these people. He could not be a weak leader. All those voices speaking to Moses. How many would, would, would want to stay, uh, stay with a congregation when one day at the service, they want to come together and stone you with rocks? Y'all know how many times that Moses almost got stoned? <laughs> and the same picture happened to Yeshua on the day of the Feast of Tabernacle. 
When he declared, if any man comes out to me, the thirst to let him come to me, and, and then they pick them stones that want to stone him. Y'all remember that? Same picture. So Moses, one time, if you use the word, they they came to Moses and they seized him, Miss Betty. It actually means that the brother, they went to Moses and grabbed him. And you have to understand that these people had begun to look at the staff of Moses when the Most High was trying to get them to look at him. That's, that's a very powerful lesson right there. The people, every time they had an issue, what they ran to? Moses. Now what they didn't learn the lesson. Moses didn't open up no red sea. If there are need in the congregation, you run to Yah. Maybe I don't see it. Maybe I don't get it. Then have you prayed the yacht so I can see it? Think about that. These are lessons that we can learn from. So Elohim, the word Elohim is, 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 is time translated as God, but we must recognize that the idea behind God or God is a Greek concept. It can also mean judge. Okay, it can also mean judge in a sense where one has some power. So if you don't remember nothing else about Elohim, just remember power, a judge. So the only one that has the power to judge our sin is the most high. So how can the judge judge us for our sins when you have repented of your sins? You're not to the judge. He know you did then he's not going to condemn you because he paid the price. So the judge have power to forgive us, to pardon us. So we want to make sure that we, we are hanging out with the right judge. Because Buddha don't have this kind of power. The other gods of the nation don't have this kind of power. Anyway, yeah, those two. So Elohim in this verse here, so far we have Shema means to pay attention, to listen with the attitude to do. Jehovah, remember that he exists. He exists. No matter what I'm going to, remember that he exists. I'm telling you, you might not be there yet. But life going to hit you and you're going to wonder, do he still exist? Oh, yeah. Oh, I know when you're young and things going, going your way, blah, 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 blah. Oh, everybody, listen, if you won the lottery, I'll put on the back of my car too. Ain't God good? But he's still the same one when I'm down and out. When I got to let my kids eat because I ain't got nothing. Can't borrow from your family because they going to tell. Yeah, I know you can't borrow from all kind of families, remember? Because they're going to tell you, girl, me talking about God is all powerful. <laughs> Some family members, I'd rather go hungry. <laughs> so now, let's move to the word at, at high. Now, this is a very powerful word because this messes us up. Jeff Bennett brings out in his book, now the strong number for Ehad is 259. And we use it in the sense of being a, a, a common interpreted to mean one, God. However, from a Hebrew perspective, this verse stated that Yahweh or Jehovah is a unit in himself. Think about it. It's the same word. It's, it's the same word. It said that when a man leaves his father and mother and joins to his wife, they become a high one. The same word. You say one, well, but they're two people. I know, but they must become one. So notice that there is a leaving and a cleaving. Notice how why many people never become one because they ain't never left. There, there must be a cleaving. Where they become one that 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 that, that uh now now when I say psyche, don't let the psychics mess up. It's just, it's just sometimes uh, 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 we get just like y'all. She, I'm like, I was just thinking that. 
Hey, babe, uh, I was gonna do that. I, said, I was just thinking that. I'm like, are we, are we getting there? <laughs> we, I'm, I'm just saying. Now, y'all already know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Any other people can testify to that? You're like, I was just, honey, I, you know, I, 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 I feel like eating this. He's like, you know what? I'm just thinking that. Now, watch this here. That that's how God wants us to get with Him. Once we become, listen, once we become one with his word, what you got to pray about? It's in the word. You're walking out. So when you invite people, i never seen so many lying believers in my life. And the famous scripture that they use, when you invite them somewhere, they say, well, if the Lord will. Just say no. They use that so much. Anybody ever? Uh, uh, if, the, if the Lord will. A friend of mine said, Did that? I invited him to the Shabbat and he said, Well, if, if the Lord will, I said, He already will be. He didn't know what to say. He, he tried to laugh it out. Now, watch this here, guys. Very important. So, watch this unity, okay? Unity. This is the same word. Now, watch this. Paul understood this here about being one. When, when Israel was at Mount Sinai, they was one. Yah showed us in the book of Bereshit, sheep. Even when they was in rebellion state, he said, because the people are is a hard. They are one. Nothing that they have imagined to do huh, shall hinder them. So Yah had to scatter the people. But he's showing us that when a people is at high, nothing can stop us. And we already know in our neighborhood that we know that one of our issues is that we ain't what? And we are we know the thing, but who's working to break it? The churches ain't one. Even the body of Messiah, whether you Baptist, huh? Protestant, it doesn't matter. We ain't even one in that. We got one Torah, but 23,000 denominations. Something wrong with this picture. How can we look at the same book and come up with all these denominations? I can tell you why. Baal. You don't care what you call them. You call, call them Baptist, Protestant, as long as you worship them. And I'm talking about the devil. I ain't talking about y'all. So... When we look at Yahweh or Jehovah, we're looking at and he wants to understand him from a unified perspective. Now, I'm going to show you a good example of this here. Let's go to the Midbar. I ain't going to tell you what it is, you better, you better start memorizing the word. <laughs> but Midbar. <laughs> I'm trying to help us out. Before you go around a scholar and he start throwing out stuff in here and don't stop to explain to you. It's the book of Numbers, okay? But Midbar. I ain't trying to boast of nothing, but I know how some people heal. So I want Israel to be you in a conversation, a dialogue with someone, and they try to throw out some Hebrew words. Oh, yeah, I know what that means. So let's look at how this unify is used in this uh, uh, sense. Let's go to Numbers of Bamenbar chapter 9. Numbers chapter 9. And so keep in mind that that the most high is a unified one. A unified. He's unified. He's not. Uh, he, it, it, it's so complicated from a human perspective. We come up with all kinds of stuff like the egg, the water, trying to explain the deity. That's, that's Greek mind. Am I right? The Greeks try to figure out the gods. Why? So they can control the gods. The Trinity. Thank you right there. Now, uh, Numbers chapter 9, let's pick it up. Who got the microphone? I need a reader. Uh, chapter, uh, chapter 9, verse 15. Okay? Start at verse. Now, we're looking at unity, okay? How that, how that two can work together, but they are unity. Go ahead. And on that day that the tabernacle was reared up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, namely the tent of the testimony. And that even there was upon the tabernacle, as it were, the appearance of fire unto the morning. So it was always the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night. Now notice that. See that? The same cloud. The same cloud. 
So that's the unit. The same cloud, but it depends on the need. You know that? It depends on the need. So Yah, he can adapt to your situation. I can teach one lesson in here, and he break it down to each of you in a, based on your situation. Based on your situation, meeting you right there. This thing had to be so simple that a child understood exactly what I just said. So that's the unified one. So when Paul used that saying in, 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 in the book of Ephesus, he's a talk about making effort to keep unity. Why? Because it don't happen like that by itself. You can't get people with different background, different color, different education, different theology. And we all just come here because under name, because we love God and be unified. It ain't happening like that. It ain't happening like that. This is a kingdom organization, kingdom business. And just as we're doing such a great job, I thank all y'all, Pastor Jays, uh, 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 Sharon them and, and, and uh, Karen them, and all y'all. We cannot function doing this. In this excellent Passover Seder that we're doing now. I, I'm just, I'm like, I can't wait to just say thank y'all. I can't wait to get together and say, man, man, y'all did an excellent job. And that's only the service. You see, because I'm I'm limited in my ability. But if y'all give you an idea, it's for the body. Am I right? We come together as unity. Because it's to lift him up. So if the idea come and it's a kingdom idea, it wasn't your idea. We share it with the congregation. Very important. And so in this thing here, guys, it's going to happen. When it happened in the congregation, when there be a frip or something in the congregation, we know that Israel, he has given us a way to deal, to keep unity. Right? He has gave us a guideline. You got an issue, you go to your brother. You don't pick up the cell phone, right? So he has shown us how to solve issues in the congregation. It's, it, it's a sin to even, it's a Torah sin to even take your brother or sister to court. Before heathens? Y'all yeah, say, just turn it up to the game. To take your brother or sister before a court. The heathen. No, we don't do that. So we see the word ahaz, okay, which means one. Now, I talked about this before and I'm going to move on because the word that's Connected to it, it can be ak, ak, which is brother. So how good it is for brethren to dwell together. It doesn't happen by itself. Looking at the sharing and, and all uh, sorts of the stuff like that, I'm sure they got it. Well, if there's an issue, what I saw, the loving family, if there's an issue, I guarantee you, listen, you Listen, they could not sing the way I saw them sing it if there's grief in the house. If that's good, yeah, yeah, it ain't flowing like that. I saw a unity. I saw nobody trying to out sing each other. I didn't see that. I didn't see Miss Sharon give you that look. No, nobody. She, it was flowing. It was it was unity. It's a, it, it, was, it was like a sibling. I mean, I know I, I talked about it before, but it was awesome to see that. And so it ought to be also that when people walk in the congregation, it doesn't matter what size it is. It's like, man, that it was just something about it. Because y'all want to dwell in the midst of his people. If you want to get y'all out of it, your marriage, your congregation, your life, just start being discord. Six things y'all hate, but seven is abomination. He that calls discord among his brother. And he says abomination. Now you know all the churches can't be wrong about putting you out. <laughs> be aware of them people that, that just jump like that. Mm -mm. So unity guys, unity to be one. If you find yourself in a little situation right now as I'm teaching that you know, it's not close as you want to, then somebody got to be willing, okay, to draw near or to make it right. If it means something to you. And I feel that, you know, not boasting, but I'll study it, it goes overboard trying to make it right. You know what I'm saying? 
overboard, but it's the spirit of Yah. Let's look at the word love. The word love. Now, in English, we we put this word with everything. It, we put the son, we put this word love with the same way I love that movie. I love them shoes. How could the most high get in the category with Nike? A Greek God. Huh? Who uses a, a slogan by a murderer. And you wonder why children are murdering themselves over these shoes. That slogan came from a murderer who was on a death row. And he, and he just looked at the guy in, in, the, in the phrase, and the guy took out the newspaper and he said, just do it. And the, the guy, the over uh, the Nike shoe, saw the newspaper and he took it. Put two and two together. Name one shoe that children has been killed over. Nike. You can't take stuff that's from a, a death row and then put it on a shoe. But they did that. And the Greek God is still being worshipped under the umbrella of Nike. Now I ain't telling you to go home and throw away your Nike, but the Holy Spirit tell you. There's another movie, guys. Be careful. I saw the uh, the previews of it the other day. Uh, Y'all remember the uh, saying Shazam? Don't say that. We used to say that growing up. It's a magic word, right? Magic word. But when it's a it's an acronym for the uh, uh, the first word. Uh, 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 S is Solomon. The second word is Hercules. The second and another is all Greek. So so it's a magic word. So I'm saying this word. I can't say it anymore. I'm saying it, but. So, calling up so now the movie come i want to pay attention to all this stuff they're calling these gods back it's a battle between the gods so the word love y'all know this is slow down please. love okay it's the hebrew word ahab is strong number 157 now keep in mind love is not an emotion I know what the song said. Love is not an emotion. It's not. That's Greek. Love is an action. So when he said, if you love me, you will keep my command. Not think about it. So if I love y'all, I keep his Shabbat. I guard his mitzvah. So love is not an emotion. Because why? Because we are very emotional people. If it was an emotion, man, we just ate dinner, left the restaurant, and, and she just said something before we got in the car, and our emotions done changed. We just had a romantic, <laughs> huh? And you're like, what happened that fast? Mm. So it is not an emotion, something that, you know, our emotion control, but it is an action. Mm-hmm. So we ought to love Yah, okay? We ought to love him with our action. When we say in English, action speak. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about love, it's the it's the love Yah with our action. Pay attention, Israel. Your whole exists, and he is unified. In other words, he agreed with himself. He ain't got a doubt if he wants, you know, that we say with Yah that he don't have to think about doing it. To know the past, present, and the future all at the same time. So he's unified with himself. And so we ought to show our love for him by our action. Now, I think there's a powerful word here because it's Olive Hay Bet. Olive Hay Bet. When you see that the word love, which is the word uh, 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 in the middle, is the word hay. And when you look at it in ancient Hebrew, it's a man with his hands up. So now, you know, if you see somebody outside with their hands up like that, it's going to get your attention, right? So it means to see or it means to reveal. And then on the outside, also in Hebrew, it's a three root word. And the heart of the word is always, or uh, uh, the middle of the word is always the heart of it. So we see that something is to be revealed. Okay? We talk about the word love. Something is to be revealed 
people ought to see it. People don't listen. My son can tell me he loved me all day long. But if he won't take out the trash, he won't do his tools, huh? He won't do nothing. I don't care what he says. His action shows different. So when he say children love your mother and father, don't give them lip service. Your love is shown in action. Huh? Thank you. I'm write that down. So now love. So now on the outside of, of the word love, which is to be revealed, is olive. And a bent, which is the Hebrew word Ab, which we say Father. So when we as children of the Most High love one another, as he has said, the love of the Father is revealed. Case in point, I'm sitting there with it today. I can see the love. That wasn't counterfeit. Somebody has sold in that family life. I saw the love in action. So we ain't got to pronounce that. Oh, we're a loving congregation. We ain't got to pronounce it. People can see it. A person would come in. And they can see it. So the father love is action revealed. Bottom line. Now, a couple more. On good time here. Let's look at another in this word here. Heart. Now, all these words that I'm using is, 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 is abstract. These are not Hebrew words. And I'm breaking them down just, just this is a, come on a Monday or Thursday, we really go to work. Am I right? <laughs> we put out the strong. And some of y'all been missing from my Facebook, Miss Sharon. I mean, uh, some of y'all been missing from my... <laughs> I got used to seeing y'all there. I'm like, where's Miss Sharon I'm at? I thought I was, I thought you changed the channel on me. <laughs> now, watch this here. Because the word heart, okay? Now, heart. In Hebrew, mind and heart are synonymous. Monday, if you come here Monday, I don't know what it is. It's crazy when, if you look at the word begot, which means it's the word that they translate as so and so begot. It's beautiful. They try to let the word, I count it like 27 different ways. And all the word mean a son. But the translators try to let the word so many different ways, it's like it's confusing. But in Hebrew, it's not like that. And that's how it is in Spanish, right? You, you, you're trying to find words to, to go with the English to help you understand. No. You got to go back and search off the language itself. It's not that complicated. So when we look at the Hebrew word lev, okay, lava, lev, uh, I can actually say that it's a lamin and a bet, okay, a lamin and a bet. Lamin means uh, 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 it's a, it was like a shepherd's staff, and then, which means something, a draw, right? It draw, it can mean authority, okay? And then we have the bet, which is a house, okay? Now, so the word lev means that which controls the heart. So whoever controls your heart will lead you. See, if y'all if y'all controlling your heart, he leads you. So they would say, he lead me. So the shepherd staff, if he has your heart, so when he say, love your heart with all your heart, with, with which that's controlling you. See, I ain't I don't have to say it. your action is showing. Very important we understand these, these little words here. Now watch this here, because when you take the word, uh, the first word in Hebrew, in the scripture, in Genesis, is bear sheep, right? It's a bet, okay? Bear sheep, which is the word bet, when it's a uh, uh, prefix to a word, all it means, in. That's all it means, in. Then the last word in the book of Deuteronomy, is the word Yisrael. You can't make this up. Yisrael. At the end of Yisrael is El. Aleph Lamed. And so what they do, because this, this, this thing is so deep. You take the last letter of Yisrael, which is a Lamed. You take the first letter, which is a Bet, 
and you can always place it's wordplay. You switch it around, it spells the word land. The Torah is the heart of Yah. So when people say the Torah is done away with, what they're saying, the heart of Yah is done away with. It's wordplay. It's, now, if you, if you, I mean, this is Bible code. You don't get this stuff in English. It's Bible code. Yah, my, my, uh, Yah has locked stuff up in, in his language, Hebrew language, that you can look at it and you can say, oh, I, 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 I see our forefather's name in Israel. It's, it's a, it's a Bible code. It's Bible code. It's, it's incredible. And so, cause why? Y'all know in the future that man was going to tamper with the DNA or try to. So y'all lock everything up in the DNA to where that it takes a, a male and a female that adds up to 44 that produce a young lad, a child. So two men can produce a child. That's why it doesn't add up to 44. It's locked up in the Bible. Code. This thing is deep. So when we talk about loving Yah with all your heart and thought, these are mine. That's a, 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 that's a, 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 a Greek concept, but it's an action. So I, I have to love him with my action. Action speaks louder than words, right? So by keeping, keeping our mind focused on him, keep our mind focused on him, very important. Now, here's another one that's incredible. Uh, let's look at the word soul in that, with all your soul. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean? And another word, if you look it up in the scroll, it's translated all different kind of ways, confusing us. So the Hebrew word soul, nephet, N-E-P-H-E-S-H, -E -E those who are taking notes, strong number, 5315. And did I give you one for the heart? Okay, sorry. 3824. And it even have a, a double, uh, Lamed Bet, Bet. So the simple form I can deal with this word here because this word is translated so many different ways. All it literally means with everything inside you, your soul. Your whole person. That's what your mind. Because the heart, I mean, how can you love God? I no, it's your mind. Why well, love God on my heart? That's not, that's not what he's talking about. The heart doesn't have heart in Hebrew, heart in Hebrew, uh, 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 mind and heart is synonymous. They're close. And so that's why the translator sometimes translated heart or mind. But they're synonymous. I, I love him with my mind. Because my heart it doesn't have a mind, but it's connected to it. With all your heart and soul and might. Let's look at the last word, might. Okay? So re remember, the soul means the whole being. The whole person. When we look at the word might, it's connected to moed or uh, meod. M-E-O-D. 39.66. I'm going to show y'all guys where I'm getting my information from so that y'all can purchase this book and add it on to your dictionary. Uh, I told you before that Jeff Bennett is the one, when you see people using the Paleo Hebrew, he's the one that did most of the, the research. So excellent tool. Does it cost? I don't know how much it costs now, but when I tell you to get a book, get it. Because these books can go from $10 to $300. Uh, I'll show you in a minute. So now, when we look at this word here, is is this word again? is a very in, interesting word, but all it means is to intensify with all your might. I mean, nobody. I mean, I can't. I don't like it when people are half hearted doing stuff. So it's saying that you're gonna love y'all, you know, with, with with everything inside of you, with all your might. Paul said that, that whatever you do in word or deed, do it all for the glory, right? So you're doing with all your might. You find somebody doing a sloppy job or lazy, they're not going to do it, right? They ain't going to do it. 
He's like, nah, I just do it myself. So he said that we are to come and love Yah with everything inside of us. Everything inside of us. Now, that's just the best way I can give it. But I'm going to read it. I'm going to read the translation in it. And I'll leave the book up here after service. You can write it down, copy it down. I don't, I don't care. But this is what it means as we translate this from a Hebrew concept. Israel paid pay careful attention and respond. Yahweh is our power and authority. Yahweh works in unity with himself. And you shall act upon your love to Yahweh, your power and authority, with your thoughts and mind, with your entire body, and with all the muchness in you, you have. That's the translation that when they, they're thinking about this here. The book that I'm gleaning from, and he has this part one, then he has another one. Uh, when I purchased it, it was $50. And now, and if you have, if you purchase the one for $50 and you don't understand it, because I didn't for about two years, <laughs> I, uh, I purchased that, like, I don't understand this yet, but I grow. And so uh, it was $50. I think it went down, okay? But this is called uh, the, uh, the Study of Ancient Hebrew Concept from the Old and the New by Jeff Bennett. You can pass that around so people can, uh, those who want to uh, purchase that book. Uh, just try to put the tools in your hand, guys, so that we can uh, uh, really help each other grow. Because I can only give so much in a setting, but as I say that, when the Holy Spirit, when you go home to study yourself. Uh, also, he has a, uh, 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 you can go to YouTube and look at some of his the short teaching. But what it does, it really will open your mind because uh, to the Hebrew mindset, how the people that wrote the book, how they see uh, life, how they uh, uh, view life and everyday life, it would intensify, it would educate, it would, it would just enhance your understanding of the text. Very important because all our words we have here is abstract, it's Greek, okay, uh, meaning a Western view. So when I'm trying to, especially when I'm talking to my wife and me and her be having, I like the problem is that I'm thinking Hebrew and you still thinking that's the issue right there. So I'm I'm trying to explain something to her, and so her mind is not there yet. And so uh, sometime in here, if I'm explaining something, because I'm doing it from a concrete Hebrew perspective. Hebrew is that you can experience it with the five senses. They understood what a father was. Is is the tent pole, a hole in the, the house up. They understood a mother is the glue that holds the house together. You know, uh, the Zarah is the offspring. And so Yah used nature to teach them, uh, to teach mankind a lesson that it is not complicated, that if you put that in, in the ground, it's going to it's, it's gonna grow. And so just simple, uh, uh, natural things. And so as we come together as a people, that uh, we can continue to learn and to grow. But we have to begin to think concrete. We have to begin to, to do word study. Uh, if I was y'all, I would encourage y'all to even look at every word that you ever knew in the Bible and, and put it back in Hebrew and uh, to the best of your ability. Uh, I'm going to do a, uh, a study on probably Psalms 119, and I'm going to use the 22 uh, letters of the Hebrew alphabet. I don't know why they didn't tell us these little things I used to see in, in, in my Bible. Uh, in Psalms 119, you see those little letters up there, Allah. That give a dollar hey, like we just oh that's none. No, David is, is teaching us the Hebrew. David was not using that, he was using that. And if you can understand each letter in Hebrew, you'll understand exactly what David is saying in each uh Psalms 119. That's all the Hebrew alphabet. You break down each one, and then we'll break down each verse. Each verse is chopped up in eight verses. And we'll do word study with a touch on certain words that's in now, like the word that really just did to me, like in Psalms uh, 1, when he say that blessed is the man, right? Blessed is the man who walks not in counsel of God. Well, the word blessed is a powerful word because it's not blessed as we think it is. It's a shock. 
And the word literally means to scrunch. It, I mean, really, to scrape. In, in, in the Hebrew, it means to take something that's crooked and stretch it out. So David is saying that because he's able to walk, he say, he say scratch is the man that walks. Oh, he said, the word of Yah is going to scratch you. Anybody been scratched? <laughs> Once you get that company, you say, whoa. Because when we get blessed, we think somebody gave us something. Let's have the word given. Amen. So that's it. What you got, son? Come on. Come around here. So y'all on the microphone. Come around. And stick to the lesson. What you got? I feel like we're talking about uh, the movie that's coming out called Shazam. Uh, I remember because uh, me and my grandma was supposed to see a movie called Captain Marvel. And so in the trailers, it was uh, it was saying how um, it said, "Say my name and let my powers flow through you." Yeah, see, see. And then. Uh, it's like when I heard that, and then uh, like the little boy, which was white, his uh, little boy said, well, I don't know your name. And so then he had went to this like cave or whatever, like a temple, and then there was like a throne or something. And then uh, at first he didn't want to say his name because he was like scared or something. He's like, don't kill me or anything. And then the, oh, like the old man just says, say it. And then like he said, uh, just do it. He said, just say the name. And then when he said it, then he is like transformed into a different person. And then uh, I feel like this movie will have like different great gods because Thor, the god of thunder and lightning, uh, on his chest, it was like a lightning bolt. And uh, like, I forgot what like Zeus is, but it has like a uh, it's a mix of different gods. So we got to watch what our kids watch. I tell you, it's all around us. And notice the power that they're trying to, uh, I was watching, I mean, I, anything on TV, every single thing around us, guys, what's going to keep us solid is the Torah and Yah's spirit. Yes, sir. Microphone right there. There go right there. Microphone. Oh, okay. I want to draw a few of these. Turn it off. Hold on. Yeah, I need you to meet you in the office. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like when the, uh, like, like even when they came out, I'm telling you, this is, this, the enemy, listen, the enemy needs darkness okay uh matter we are made of matter right and so when you start hearing dark matter they need dark matter okay and so the enemy cannot invade this world without a body he needs a body so he's using these movies and these cartoons and all these things and people are, are, are going to be just gravitating towards it and giving it Giving us power. See, they need power. That's why they're trying to tell us to save power. Because they need the power. This thing has to go back to bear sheep. This one world government. And the world has to, this thing that is going to happen uh, out of chaos. Phoenix out of chaos. So I create, watch this here. I create the situation I want. I create the race war. Then I create solution. Then he become the Messiah. I'm telling y'all. So everything that y'all see around us, around us, is counterfeit. It's a mirage. They're fooling us. This has to happen so they, they can set up the world. Listen, I'm not saying these people are not dying. But I create such a, 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 a uh, probably the only country that's really holding it. The system back is America because why wow, we have too many guns. So I gotta create. Watch this here. If 